Kayla Mong Grill. Let's make gang beef noodles. And now. Uh, okay. But I don't want egg. Don't no. worry, don't worry. We share it. Just make it. Uh -huh. uh, no, I'm, I'm coming. Okay. Pause the game. Oh, pause the game. No problem. I pause this. Tao. Ma. Ma. You say you want to share it. You do not know that if you share it. Eh? You don't know that it's just destiny you're sharing. Destiny, there's not enough for you. Don't share it with anybody. Anybody at all. I don't even want to know who that person is. Don't share it. Talk about me. Anybody. This one now. Oh god. Edgar, give me my turn now. What are you buying? Wow, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Edgar, you got the idea, man. Do that. Oh, but let's make it. Oh, yeah, give me a copy. Share it to Ah, but I don't need to share it. Oh, I just forgot. Uh, that's Kitty's former very popular Taoma. Um, okay, now there is um, well, that leads us to what we're talking about today. Uh, we're talking about superstitions, uh, myth, and of course, taboos. We're growing up, we hear so many things don't do this, if you do this, this will happen. But your parents can never explain to you how it happened. They told them and they told us, so the kids, the stories just keep going and going. They say, like, um uh, if you cross the leg of a pregnant woman, the child you give birth to will look like the woman. They say, um, you don't, I don't know, I also heard the one of you cover the mirror at night if you want to sleep. Well, there are so many of these superstitions that we got to know. You might want to send us a message and tell us about some of these superstitions in your own, uh, in, that you heard growing up and tell us if you still believe in it. All right, I have uh, with me to talk about this, a friend of the house, Willie. Okay, how will you come? Okay, or how do I even call you? Really, really welcome. Uh, I employ me. No, be smart. I'm gonna call it salad now. Now, in fact, uh, <laughs> it is not a small something. Uh, so tell us, growing up, you had many of this. Tell us like two or three first. I don't like this. I follow her people for work. Oh. <laughs> okay. You know, like our own one. You know, there are sometimes if you want to study and uh, you see people whistling. You no. Know? They say mm. if you whistle, say they draw snake. Come. No, but when I heard, they say if you whistle at night, yeah. uh, you attract evil spirits or something. Yes, evil spirits, some say evil spirits, some say snakes. Then there's another one again, they say if you draw a line, if you cross it, like if you don't want anybody to disturb you, just draw a line. Say if you cross it, <laughs> you go burn snake. Hey! All those kind of things. Ah, come to the top snake, snake. <laughs> now go change them, I will change them. Yeah, if you don't, uh, yeah, yeah. you are uh, you are not this guy. <laughs> yeah, Chicks the general, yeah. talking snake to... Okay. Dr. Van Snake. Then there's another one again. There's this particular um I don't know the name of the tree like that. You know, that time I just want my mother to still have other our own younger ones because you're only three guests in the house. So we are mm. praying for another child, mm. maybe a boy or a girl. So that time one of our friends would tell us, I carry this this particular I got one I don't know as the team B. So once I just put a inside water, Ma begin they call mm. the water, say my mother go get belly. And all this <laughs> in a superstition. Then another one again, when it's raining and it's sunny. At, At the same, same time, time, they say lion and goat, they fight. Hey, that's a very popular one yes, abroad, though. Yeah, when it's raining and sunny, they say lion, lion and, and goat, goat is fight. fighting. In fact, there are so many of them where they say, I they hold them for work. If I don't want, that, if I want to chance you, I'll just use one kind of popular thing as in. Okay, there's another one again, if you sit down. If somebody cross your leg. Yes. You tell that person, no, cross back and back. So I don't want shoot. <laughs> no, no, I know that one. I, mm. I, okay, I did it. But I really don't know why. I, yes, I, I'm confessing on international TV. I did it. But I really don't know why. Why did we really do that? They say if you cross the leg or cross back, that your leg is going to get shot or something. And I think uh, many of this superstition, I think because, I think, I, I don't want to use the word control, but let me just use control. You know, there are certain things that people want to like, let's control this. Let's try to make these people live this kind of lifestyle. Let's just mind the kind of things they yeah. do, the, where they go and stuff like that. So they will just use this superstition of a thing to control us. As in, don't be stubborn. Don't live like this. Don't be like this. Don't do this and that. And sometimes stories too. Mm. You know those kind of stories that our yeah. parents used to tell us when they gather children and start telling them different kind of funny, funny stories. Yeah, All this thing are just to hold us for work. <laughs> but yes, some are true. Okay. Some are true. Maybe something happened. But one thing about superstition is... Maybe it happened to a particular family. Before you know, they go down, spread, and make everybody begin. They live that kind of, or they believe, they believe that kind that of kind a thing of. that it can happen to another person. But some of them are individual things. 
All right, let's have fun today. And uh, do send us a message on our phone line, 081-177-82020. Uh, do send us a message and tell us what are those superstitions you heard growing up. Or if it's a taboo, you know taboos, uh, this one, they are actually, they can be real. Yeah. The ones in your villages, they say, forget that this stone is very precious. So, or this thing is one that saved, like Olumo Rock, for mm. instance. I know the story with Olumo Rock is that it's a rock that protected the people back in the days during the war. There are some places you go to, don't cross this, go into this village and uh, stuff like that. For a for core members who will be going to serve in many areas that are not there, they need to be familiar with some of the taboos in these areas so that you can get to stay safe. Mm. Taboo. Hmm. God bless me, oh, just forgive me so that I won't say what it pass my mouth. You see, when we talk about taboo, mm. just like what I said in superstition, there are so many individual experiences mm. that at the end of the day, they will make it as if it's a village thing. It is your own experience, not my own experience. But in order to control people based on this is the law of the land, this is, um, how do I put it? Some people are using it to, for selfish interests. Mm. Some people are using it to control the people. When I mean control, not really as in I want to uh, uh, overpower yeah, you, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just control as in let everybody live peacefully. Mm. So that is when this taboo of a thing will come in. Yes, our forefathers, a lot of things happened during those days of our forefathers. Maybe a hunter or mm. maybe one pregnant woman or maybe something like this. In order to like say, okay, let's find a way to control this uh, conflict between village and village. Somebody will just come up with one taboo of a thing. No, nobody must do this. You remember that time you say when they come, like foul. Ma, use another simple example. Foul. Mm. Mm. We know that part. Where they go to make woman no chopper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many of us but no chopper that time. Okay, yes. But today now, imagine person buy full chicken. Who go help me chopper? <laughs> now me go chopper. No be so. Yeah, yeah. There are so many things that they told us those days that when you tell people, don't do this, don't do that. But many people go to another state and do it. Nothing will happen. Mm. It's just belief. It's just... But once there is covenant, you know, blood covenant and the rest of them, our forefathers, they said this. Once the connection is there, no matter where you go, the thing will touch you. That's, it will affect you once you break the rules. Mm. But as long as you don't break that covenant or nothing concerning, you don't know anything about it, nothing will affect okay, you. Okay, you grew up in Lagos like me. Mm. And um, I know my mom can have all the things that has happened in Lagos. I don't know, she seems to have a record of them all. Mm. She tell us how someone picked money on the road mm. and turned to a yam. Mm. Uh, Bama Bama, if someone, hey, I don't... Bama, Bama. <laughs> Bama, Bama, you remember hey, that, right? Bama, Bama, Bama. Hey, so there, there are many of these things they, 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 get, they get to tell us. I just seem like, wow, okay, it's a uh, one whole mystic thing. Bama, Bama, see, uh, Bama, Bama is, is, is another name for Bama, Bama is kidnapping, uh, another name for ritual, yeah. Okay, yes, it's Bama, Bama because when you those days, Bama, Bama, they kidnap mostly okay. children. Yeah. And these children that they kidnap is for ritual. Those days, this issue of labor, this uh, child labor, it wasn't that much then. Mm. It, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't really a big thing then. It was mm. just kidnap a child, use them for ritual, or they use them to serve the gods or something like that, or use them, you know. But now you can see people still do kidnapping for ritual, for child labor, maybe kidnapping children to another family to take care of them or kidnapping children for a hard labor. You know, like I remember those days when uh, we state where um, they pack children, child soldiers, people that are into breaking of uh, rocks mm. and this thing called lead that were affecting the children's heart. So they pack these children, the adults, those particular kind of labors that they don't want to do because they are scared because of their age, they kidnap the children and put them in those kind of works for them yeah. to do. So those kind of things exist then, but presently, I think more of ritual and more of uh, children okay, into... Okay, so Goma Goma is actually... It's, it's ritual. It's, it's, that is real. It's not no, a then, superstition. I'm talking about then. Mm. No, see, when you talk about superstition, when you talk about taboo, so many things happened. Hmm. So many things happened. When I talk about so many things happened, Forces do. Hmm. I beg, mean, pause the forces first. Mo will take some messages and then we'll go. <laughs> All right, who is this person? Are they Inca? Please tell us where you're writing from. I was always told to bang my lips together when there is thunder and lightning. Bang it like you have to put your lips together. Okay, I don't know. I've got to shock you, you go for. 
<laughs> That's not true. Mm. Good day. The one I heard is, if you sweep a bachelor's feet, you will never get married. This is Hassan from Kaduna. Uh, some, some part of Bini, they say lizard cross your leg. Oh my God, give woman bele. Any woman <laughs> will touch me, give her bele. <laughs> okay. I don't understand why people take the superstitions of a thing so serious. Anyway, there was a country. This is from ne Neoko. All right. Uh, let me take this one then. I would... Um, I am um, okay. Please do stop calling. I just send in messages so I can I can read the message. I am oh oh he by name. If you are sitting down and someone crosses your leg, it means that if you born a child, the child will look like exactly like that person. Okay, mm. we're very. I don't know. I know that uh, from. It's a popular word. I don't know, maybe in the I know in the south mm. west where I came from and the south south. I know that people believe that, but I don't know if it's a general thing. Anyhow, do send in your. Thoughts, your opinion. What do you think about superstitions? Share with us the one you heard while growing up. And uh, did it really scare you? And uh, do you still believe it? Do you still pass it on to your children? All right, um, it's time for us to take a feature. And this feature is taking a look at uh, just a general overview on superstitions and myths. Hello, children. Hello, In Nigeria. Myths and superstitions are what parents tell their children to scare, teach, or make them believe strongly in something, with many of these myths still deeply entrenched in traditional practices of demons and spirits. Growing up as a child in a typical Nigerian home, taboos, superstitions, and myths are familiar tales. These beliefs, which are passed on from generation to the next, essentially have unverifiable or unknown sources, but are held on in the minds of many as facts. Here are some of the common superstitions in Nigeria. Number one, according to a southwestern folktale, whistling at night is said to be an invitation to demons and could result in dire consequences. Number two, if an individual walks over a pregnant woman's legs, it is believed that she will end up giving birth to children who look just like the person. How this belief came to be, no one can yet explain. But pregnant women are quick to take their legs out of the way when someone tries to cross over them. 3. When your hand itches, it is believed that money will come your way. Till this day, some still believe the unexpected money that comes their way is as a result of a scratch on their palm. While some are hopeful for a scratch of palm cash, some fear that too much itching means money will never come their way. Or, it is a belief by some in the northeast that a breastfeeding mother should not eat fruits like mango, as this will give the baby diarrhea and a red bottom. 5. Pregnant women and breastfeeding mothers should not eat eggs as the baby will be sick more frequently. Number 6. There is a warning not to bend over to look between your legs, especially in crowded places like markets. One is bound to see ghosts and witches that way. According to Hausa mythology, a sojourner called Bajida arrived in a city after a long journey where he requested water from an elderly woman. After she informed him that she didn't have any and couldn't go fetch water from the well, because there was a snake preventing people from fetching water. It is said that Bajida proceeded to kill the snake. As his reward, he got married to the queen and had seven sons who are thought to be the original house estates. In Igbo mythology, Ogwide or Uhamiri is a mermaid, also known as Mami Water. It is said she resides in Oguta Lake and is a black beautiful woman with the tail of a fish. When a child is born, he is first given the water from the lake to drink. And when its mother wants to resume social life, she must go and wash her feet in the lake. The lake is believed to be the entry and exit point of all human life. And the people around the lake are called Indimiri or people of the lake. Amadioha is the god of thunder and lightning of the Igbo people of southeastern Nigeria. He is also known as the God of Justice. It is said that when he delivers judgment between two parties, he strikes the erring candidate dead with lightning and the mark is seen on his forehead. 
Yemocha is a Yoruba deity celebrated as the giver of life and as the metaphysical mother of all Orisha or deities. She is said to be the mother of Shongo, Ogun and many others. She is said to be able to cure infertility in women and the carry on her hair represents her wealth. She does not easily lose her temper but when angered she can be quite destructive and violent as the floodwaters of turbulent rivers. Myths, legends and superstitions may be tales passed on from one generation to the next meant to scare a child or individual of bad habits. But growing into adults, some are still wary of the possible consequences of acting likewise, while others say it's a belief for feeble minds. Good night, children. Good night. All right, now we've just taken a look at some of the superstitions um, that uh, we heard growing up. Maybe a couple of these are still in practice now. And uh, well, whether you believe it or not, it's up to you. All right, I'll just take a few messages and I'll introduce my next guest. Uh, who is this? This person said when we play at night, we are playing with spirits. Seriously, right now? Okay, this one says, if you swallow mango seed, mango, mango will grow in your stomach. Ah, back in. Okay. <laughs> Drink, I will grow for your belly. It will grow your stomach, yeah. right? Okay, I am Chair Mecca from Kebi. They used to tell us that when we are small, that if you eat a head of pop of popo, you will turn mad. And till now, I don't eat a head of popo. Mm. They also told us that if you cut the head of a duck and put it inside an empty com 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 cover, what's com com cover? Com 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 cover. Okay, what's com 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 com? That's thin. 18, okay. Yeah, come, come. Oh, like Pangolo. Pang I, I, yeah, I, that's I, it. Talking, come, I need to come. come back the next day. I need to turn to a snake. We believed all this at that time. The one, another one I remember hearing is, um, for, for how does this happen? They say coke, uh, coconut water. Mm. I want to drink it. We're not good. We're not going to be intelligent. So they, that if children like us drink it, uh, we won't be intelligent. So we just leave it. But they coconut, end up drinking it. You get coconut head, but this is that our coconut head they make us they drink the water. <laughs> okay, yeah. all right, it's time to meet my guest, and my guest is coming in from our uh, Lagos studios, and he is Lekon Adjurotutu. He is a traditionalist, and he will be speaking to us from Lagos. He's going to explain to us some of these uh, superstitions and taboos from the southeastern part of the country. Uh, Lekon, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, yeah. In uh, African culture or history or our cultural belief, we have what we call myths, we have superstition, and we have taboo. This, although they sound similar in many, but at the same time, there are differences. Taking, for instance, starting from uh, myths, myths can be legend stories. That is, the stories we believed are, are powerful heroes in the olden days that have done this and done this. And because they are specially created, they have the opportunity or power to do this. And we, taking, for instance, one of our myths is the creation of the world. We believe Ileife is the cradle of Yoruba, and not only Yoruba, the whole universe that Olutumari, God, gave Obatala, the white robe uh, god, a uh, 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 mission to create the world. And he landed in Ilefe. And that, then Ilefe was water. Every hour was water. But eventually, with the things given to him, he was able to create the world. To, to the Yoruba people, this is the actual story. But to other people, because they believe it happened in this side of the world, they will not take it to be theirs, and that is myth. But to taboo, taboo is don't. It's not just a joke. Taboo is real. It's different from superstition. So when you are mentioning taboo, there are different types of taboo. A old town do have its own taboo. A family has their own table. Professionals, that's maybe hunters, farmers, they have their table. Taking, for instance, if you are an hunter, you are forbidden from taking any 
any bush meat or animal from the the hunting uh, trap of any other hunter is a taboo. You don't do it. That's for the group. But the Stoughton's family, when you give birth to a newly born baby, you don't eat salt as the mother of the newly born baby. You don't eat salt. We don't eat oil. That's oh, that, and these are Orolu family. Orolu moni yo mo gate mo le poni le mo jelani fun fun. Because if they dare do that, that child will go back, will die, and it's not just uh, uh, it's not a superstition. It's a real taboo. But it come to superstition, we have superstition in the southwest here too. Like they will tell you when it is rainy. You don't fetch water with your with your hand or your pen that strong thunder will struck you. And definitely for now it has been proved scientifically that there is uh, energy, a source of energy within your palm and thunder. That is one. It's also a superstition that if you are eating on the door entry, you cannot you you'll, you'll be satisfied. You will be belly full. You will be satisfied that no matter the amount of food you, you eat, that is one. The one of crossing a pregnant woman, I think it's cut across and everybody knows that. Another thing, if I'm going to visit somebody or I'm going for an appointment and I eat my food on the stone, I'll go by that. No, this will be a bad day. That is superstition. That no, if you go there, you can't meet that person or whatever you are going for will not be successful. That is uh, superstition that we believe may happen and it may happen it may not happen they are not uh, it may not be the reality but unlike taboo that is reality if you do it you get your the, you face the consequence another thing is if you wear the back of your clothes if you they say definitely you will see money you will see gift somebody must give you a gift and another one is uh, like Monday morning, if you ask me for money or to pay you, I won't pay you because that means throughout that week, I'll be paying. I won't receive money, but I can be paid. I can receive money on Monday morning or early morning. But if I'm to give you, I won't do that. So I will say maybe when my salary is paid on Monday morning, maybe I should take it or I should not take it. So, but that is a superstition that we believe this may happen and this may not happen. But in what we call meat. I've told you earlier on is a story of the legends or the creation or some things that are beyond imagination. But when you talk of superstition, it's because it, in this side of the world that will be no this, this the superstition is not real. It can be real because part of a superstition we believe uh, tortoises, ijakba, can behave like human being. We go to the king, play game. And when he won, the king will divide all his belongings, including his wives. The king will divide his wives, his money, his other things, and give some parts to tortoise. That is to Rosa because we believe tortoise is the wisest animal. So some uh, right, society. Um, okay, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Leko. It's been like it's a whole lot of lecture he has just given. Like he has just given so much information. Yeah, so from so much information in one. So uh, very quickly, he mentioned all that. I remember in Lagos growing up, uh, where you go to the market and you negotiate and negotiate and everything, and you ended up not buying. The woman go insult you. Oh, oh. As, as you talk market, I just remembered what they say. Once you go to the market and you look at, you just turn like this upside down and look at the people in the market. Somebody will just give you conk. Say why they say you don't know, say. When I know what I want to, I go see them. Oh God. Those kind of and when you scratch your hand. That's if you're always fond of scratching your, your hand, scratching you. Yeah. Money will come. Yeah. My brother, sometimes the money they scratch, you don't <laughs> See, you heard of the one, I don't know, there's one the right leg hitting a stone, left leg hitting a stone. I can't remember which one of them they said. No, they don't talk plenty. If you hit you, go wound you. <laughs> if you like, see, like, you know, he made one example. Okay. Like that issue of Hunter. He said something about Hunter. Mm -hmm. That if a uh, person catch meat, you go carry that person meat. See, taboo is like rules. You know, when I started, I said something about so many things happened those days, so many years ago. Mm. So in order to control the people, not based on selfish interest, yeah. in order to control people that respect each other's boundary, yeah. respect each other's uh, maybe family, whatever. Let me just use the word boundary. They will set rules. And these rules are taboo. Now imagine hunter will go farm. The hunter go in a insect trap. 
Yeah. And now he own side, now inside the trap. Another hunter come, collect her. Come, collect Of him. course, he go first. And this thing fit cause village quarrel. So because of that, they will set rules. And it's a taboo. Anybody that takes another person's meat or this and that, man, they will hunt you down. And mm. if you're stubborn enough, they will meet their gods. So anybody will do this one, hunt the person down. So they don't already set rules. So if another hunter sees another hunter's meat, you go clear hand. Because that's come on hand. Mm. Like there's one that happened in my village. Now two people they fight. Now woman calls the quarrel because he get money past me. You know, get money past me. Mm. What thing happen? They call to say the next women that are the other new uh, what do they call her? The new women where we say they just they marry into the family. They say get one oath where they will take. Say na normal taboo, na normal thing where they do for the family. But when they now told the women the story of what happened, they say what thing concern me with two people quarrel. You know, sometimes this thing are just individual experience. Mm. Or maybe two people's experience. They will not spread it to right. everybody and say it's a taboo. Based on selfish yeah, interest. Yeah, but for what he just said, that uh, taboos are actually um, real. There are things that are cultural practices that um, that must be kept. That must be kept like. That's why I said to control the people, not control as in overpower the people. Just to like how do I the, the rules as in your boundary, my boundary. Don't go to this place to do this because okay, imagine now there are some states. When you go to, you know, this catfish, this point and cave fish, mm -hmm. there are states where you go, they don't, they don't eat that fish. Mm -hmm. You'll be surprised that when you try to find out what is the cause and why is it that they don't want people to be eating that fish or going to that river to fish, you'll be surprised that people are going there to abuse it. Okay. And because of that, they've just said taboo, nobody should go there. All right, let's take some messages very quickly. Um, Amika from in Lagos, I heard that if you th throw your tooth on the roof, you will grow, it will grow back, but you if you don't, grow. it will not grow. <laughs> Live and nature will make and Man, grow. my teeth don't plenty for our roof that year. Yeah, my, my, yeah they say if a, a lizard will take it, eat it and your tooth will grow back. My name is Zainab. I also learned that when a lizard falls on your leg, that means you are pregnant. Another one, if, you're, if, you, have, uh, if you don't have that broken to normal yeah. teeth where they fall, say if you see lizard, no laugh. Say if you laugh where lizard, then your teeth grow rotten. <laughs> so once our teeth just went, oof, oof. <laughs> my name is Emmanuel from Delta State. Most people are saying that if it rains at the same time and it falls, that means an elephant is giving birth. Yeah, um, birth or goat and lion fighting. Yeah, you say how true is that? I was told when growing up that if you eat mango and drink a uh, soft drink, you will die. Hey, I heard that one. Though. Is it Gary? No. Uh, Gary and it's mango. Gary and mango. Poor, yeah. But I'll try more. Okay, in Tivland. It depends on stubborn belly. Like chop and not to go out. T, uh, Felix from Tivland uh, from McCordy says, if in Tivland it's a taboo for women to see a dead dog. Hmm, wonderful. Okay, I am Precious Martins from Sapele Delta State. I was told that if you eat snake at 12 p.m., the snake will dance in your stomach even if the snake is dead. Ah, they don't prepare <laughs> the food. Well. They don't prepare the food. Well. All right, let's... Uh, uh, yes, uh, before we go back to uh, Lagos to hear more from Lake Home, I'll take this one and then we'll take a feature. My name is Emmanuel from Kaduna State. Growing up, I was made to believe that a man should not sit on a mortar or a fire stone because it will cause bad luck. Yeah, like if you're traveling now and you want to carry like a mortar or any of those kind of things, if you reach park, they know a great carrier. Some of them will yes, say yes. I still they don't have to today. Till yes, today, even I, if you say, I got one carry my motor, go give my grace, they will not. But why? I've vaxxed. So, Nobody could say anything. And even, um, they would, I think there are some people that will tell you to put a particular amount of money, which is not a big amount. Something like the uh, coins, uh, coins, some coins or something coins like that, yes. But you today, if you ask them, they don't go. Okay, I hope um, Lake in Lagos will be able to take us on that. But that will be after we get back from the street where we will sort your opinions and ask you what are the superstitious practices you heard or practice while growing up and do you still believe in it? The myth I heard about when I was growing up was um, if you pick up money from the floor, you turn to a yam or a goat, whichever. <laughs> Which is, I mean, I grew up in Lagos, so that was pretty common. And as a child, you wouldn't want to pick up money from the floor because of that. When I was little, they used to tell us that when you sat by this roast side stone, you get shot, you're not so anymore. <laughs> that was then. But now I don't used to believe that. One day I was 
returning from a, a church, cross overnight. I visited my village some time ago. And I, I walk on the lonely road. As I was just coming, I had a full step by these, uh, f f by the bush path. And I just turned, but I did not find anything. No, I didn't see the particularity, whether human or ghost. I, but I, before, so uh, all of a sudden, my head began to swell or uh, big, heavy. So I just screamed, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, but I I wanted to go back. My I said no. I still move forward. I keep saying Jesus until I go off that uh, uh, bush path. Uh, when we were young, they'll tell you don't cry at night as a child. That when you cry, bush baby will come and carry you, and so on. Those things are actually uh, uh, meant to guide us in morals, in our in our behaviors, and so on. Growing up as a child, I didn't actually grow up in the east, but I, I went there like 2018, so when I went there, I saw this particular snake, green. They said, you cannot kill this snake, it lives with people in the house, doesn't bite, doesn't do anything. But I don't think I believe that, because I think snake is snake and it might still bite. And there's this one also that um, when you get married and you go out and you cheat on your husband, when you come back, you're going to run mad or die or something. I've not seen that. I only heard of that. So I can't really say they are true because I've not seen them in action. It's this bird that used to fly, I used to call it Leke Leke. When you, when you say Leke Leke, you now say Leke Leke, give me one finger, I will give you two finger. Then you now say one white thing on your fingertip, you now say Leke Leke has given me finger, you start running. And secondly again, they say when you sit on the motor, you will not grow. And also when you sit on the stone, you will not grow. Or if you cross somebody's leg, they'll say, you are going to be like that. Well, true. Uh, we all have, um, we all heard the stories. And yeah, trust me, um, you all fell for it somehow. I mean, don't tell me, at least there must be one that you fell for. And mm. some of them don't just know our parents. I don't, they, they don't find out this thing. They just pass into us all, but passing mm -hmm. on and passing on and passing on. You know, just um, while the camera was not rolling, you were talking about twins. Yeah. And that is, that, in fact, that's a whole, that's a very serious one. How is it that back in the days before the Mary Celeste time, right, that they were killing twins and they were discard of one? Because uh, those days, our fathers, they don't understand why a woman will have like two pekin inside belly. You understand? The thing funny. Two pekin inside belly. It just come outside like that. So to them, I think because, you know, our, our fathers those days, they worship the gods. Now, what did the gods they tell them? Did they believe. So anything we tell them, they will just take them. And sometimes when they look at what the things that is happening around them, they will just believe, oh, now so it be. So they will just take that belief. So when they come, they say, those twins, the way they bought, they will say one of them are evil pekin. The other one are the good one. So they go just, before you know, they go just throw it that one for evil forest. Mm. Or they go use them as sacrifice. Or maybe if a woman is giving birth and the woman dies, that picking, because of saying my mother, that picking automatically yeah, evil an picking. evil picking. So yeah. these are their belief. Ah. Now they say abom uh, twins na abomination, twins na this, twins na taboo, blah, 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 blah. But today, everybody, they pray for Holy Spirit. For three, for two. Mm. Some they born seven. So how come the taboo no come to affect the children these days? Okay, and um, that, that was a serious one. I've always thought about that too. Um, we are going to Lagos now, and um, I would like um, Lagos to throw a little light on the issue of that, that mortar and coin thing. Yeah, so I don't know if it's a if it's a practice you've heard. If you do it, that mortar and coin thing, where is it? Is it a taboo? Is it a superstition? Just throw light on that and uh, anything extra you want to add. Superstition. Uh, thank you. Before that, I need to correct an impression. The issue of twins that they will kill one and leave one. You can remember the story of Mary's lesser. Uh, it's not applicable to Yoruba race. Because in Yoruba land, since that old days, we really cherish twins. That if one died out of the two, you have to carve an image to represent the second one. And when you are feeding the live one, the, the deadly one too, you, the one that is late, you must put food near is uh, the carved image, the carved object, representing that this is the kind of or tie. So that Mary's little story is not a clip applicable to the Yoruba side of the nation. We don't kill twins in Yoruba land. In fact, they are special and we regard them, we regard, we regard them as, uh, as a deity. So there is Orisha Beji. That's a deity 
for the twins then. Then traveling with motor, you see, we believed if you put motor in a vehicle, you are traveling from one state to the other, the engine of that vehicle will knock. And it's still in practice up to now. If you go to Ishagamu on that bridge, that's your Lagos Urban Express Road, you see the Malam selling potter there. If you have to buy, they will give you that coins. Because if you don't put coins, this, in, the impression is that the engine of that vehicle will lock. So that's why they always do that. Then the, I've mentioned the twins, the coins, uh, that is the motor and the coins, and so on. But you see the taboo in the Yoruba nation. We, we, it's like sets regulations, rules, law to guide the society so that the society can be at peace. Take it for instance, there is a river, they say, no, you cannot kill, you cannot fish in this river. And that if you, if you kill any fish there, if you cook it, it will never be done. And if you eat it, it will become a live fish in your tummy. It's because in the, in the olden days, that river is the only source of their water. And when people are allowed to fish there, they will pollute that water. That will, it will not be drinkable again. So what do we do? We don't have tap, we don't have bowl, we don't have well. So this is the only source of our water. So the only what we can do is the elders, they get us, you know, it's a taboo to fish here. So nobody could go there to fish. That is another thing. But the meat we are talking about, I've told you earlier on that meat is that uh, some stories probably on the creation of a town or a city that cannot be maybe scientifically proved. But at the same time, if it's from the Yoruba land or from Nigeria or from Africa, no, 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 that is fallacy. It can be real. But if it's from the other side of the world, we believe, no, this is reality. We won't say uh, it's a myth or it's a taboo. Taking, for instance, let's check our two holy books, the Bible and Quran. That is a story of Yunus, which is other, which other means uh, uh, Jonah in the Bible. Look at the story. They were on the water. He was on the water. He was thrown inside the water, and fish swallowed him, and was in the belly of the fish for three days, and later was vomited. That because this story is in the holy books, so we say no, it's untouchable. Because it's directly from God. But I think it's from our cultural belief or our traditional religion. We say, no, it's a taboo, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a superstition. It can never be real. So some of these things are real. Taking, for instance, in the Southwest here, if you, are, if you are pregnant, you can go out in when it is sunny or midnight. If you have the rainy reason to go out, you have to tie either stone or little iron like stone or coin or iron on your on your wrapper because they believe that time of the day the demons the evil spirits are moving up and down and they believe they can cast away the baby and they will enter the baby, the, the tummy of the pregnant woman so some of these things is not just taboo because some of the babies we are giving birth to these days they were not in our land before they are not in our land you see baby with two heads it's very strange to us Though social medias have made most of these things popular. But because, I can tell you, we don't really have it then. But because of these taboos, and we call it superstition, don't go there, don't do this, and you say, no, it means nothing. And that is why we are still seeing that now. And we believe that if a pregnant woman gives birth, during the time that we lost uh, our grandmother or grandfather, we call him Baba Tunde or Yabo Dekwe, it was that old mama that came back home. It may be a superstition, I don't know, but that is what we take around everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I get what you're saying. You know, I like uh, that um, reincarnation thing. It, mm -hmm. it's, I don't know if it's a practice, but it's still in practice today. I, when I was born, my grandmother had just died. Uh, yeah, my grandmother has just died, so they called me Yabo, and now, now, so they keep calling me mommy. I say, I am not mommy, auntie, please. I am your, I am your niece. I am not your mommy, and all that stuff. Well, I don't know what it is in the southwest and the other parts of the country, but we see that. I know these things are really popular around there. That motor thing is still in my head. I have to still go and ask more questions after this. I won't lie to you. Eh? There are so many things that even if you try to get the answer, you will never... But the motor is just a wood that was just carved now. I mean, can't I... 
I don't know. I guess that we would. just never have that. Uh, I don't have, have the answer to that. But uh, just before we get our conversation going, let me ask you a question about uh, there is this masquerade festival in the southwest. I know they do in the night. Oro. Yeah, they said uh, a pregnant woman, nobody goes out, and pregnant women are not supposed to see it. Throw a little light on that because that's something I've always thought about. I say, but come on, it's just, why can't I just go out? It's Oro. Tell us about it. Deities, one of the girls in the uh, traditional religion. Either you are a pregnant woman, or you are a small girl, or a young lady, anything you so far you are of female sex, you can never see oro. You can't go out to 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 witness oro. Otherwise, that person will die, or evil things will be happening to that person. It's a taboo, and it's still happening up to now in Ikorodu, in Lagos State. Their oro is in the broad daylight, in the afternoon. And that means all women, everybody must be indoor or you stay where it's closer to your place of work. Their oro is in the afternoon and you'll be locking for two days. All the women, including baby girl, including young girls, no matter whatever so far is that of your sex. Because that person will die or something evil will be for that person. And it's not because I'm a son of the soil. A, an Aousa man can who come out in the afternoon and witness Oro in Ikorodu or any part of Yoruba land. And Igbo man, so far is a man, can come out and witness Oro. They won't send you away. But if you are a girl, even if you are an indigenous, it's not possible. So that one is not, it's just, it's a taboo. And it's still real, reality up to now. You don't do it. So that's for Oro. Oro is a deity. I get you. Thank you very much. I know in the south there is a ma some masquerade in the south is that I hear that they also do that that women are not. Yeah, there was to a see. time that when masquerade come outside, people are not allowed to go, especially female. You're not supposed to come outside. You're not supposed to say anything masquerade, whatever. But as I'm talking to you now, in fact, would they carry our chair go sit down there? They wait for the festival. Yeah. And I know they see them. They will just come. You go see where masquerade. There is, see, there's a way I see masquerade. I see them as sacred things. Mm. Like in Lagos those days, <clears throat> like uh, somewhere in CMS, you know CMS now. Mm. You go see some guys go wear masquerade. Begin the, I am Tiki Lonshala, anything for the no, boys. I mean, just... I know so I go dash you money, but see what they teach me about masquerade. But why you go come meet me? They beg me money. Wait, so the were they the taught masquerade. what is a masquerade? Were they taught? Or because oh. of, I don't want to use the word civilization. What did they teach them? Hmm. <clears throat> How did they see masquerade? Okay. Um, well, that's, <laughs> I think that's some whole secret thing that would, um, well, let's just leave masquerade story. Uh, very quickly, let me take some of your messages. I'm Solomon. I was told that if you kill a snake and cut it into snake again and cut it, then leave part of it close to each other for 24 hours, they will join together again. Wow. Okay. We were told that if you look at the mirror with red clothes in the night, you will see a wizard wearing heels. They say me not carry newborn baby face. <laughs> you usually begin to change to something. My name is Faith and you'll be... They make us believe that if you eat mango seed, okay, to grow, grow your stomach. Um, I'm Juliet from River State. The superstitions I heard was when two chickens are fighting, we should bring two brooms and pin it to the ground to join them. I I hear you. Good afternoon, Cecil. I'm Gift from River State. When I was growing up, my mother told me not to allow man cross my leg that I would get pregnant. And that yeah, one, yeah, we, you see that thing I'm telling you, to guide them or control, not control for selfish interest, but just control to help mm. those particular, like this issue of fowl now. I've seen it, but if you ask me, I don't know. You will see two fowl like this, they just did their own jeje je, and you won't make them fight. Now just carry nail, knock for ground. They go fight, 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 fight. We go dead there, they look at more. <laughs> they not go green leave themselves. They will begin to bleed though. Until you remove that nail, they go stop to the fight. You know, all the stories of uh, superstitions, mm. uh, myths and all this stuff, they are all part of us. I mean, I don't know, somehow it's just taking place into our culture. So, and of course, uh, Nollywood, we know, is a mirror of the society. So, in this next feature, you'll be seeing now, with, we're taking a look at... Uh, what we call is a series called Juju Stories. It's put together by Dayemi. It's quite an interesting one. Just enjoy it as it takes a look at some of our superstitions. The way we live this world. 
very important. Very, very important. If you are burying someone, it's good to show people that they were loved, that the lives they lived mattered. Nollywood, a fast-growing Nigerian movie industry, has truly evolved with original stories. Calm down, calm down. Why my daughter has been kidnapped? You want me to calm down? Think about this. If we don't tell our stories, someone, somewhere, will tell them. And it could become what generations coming will digest as facts. Today, content producers like Kemi Adetiba, Bolanle Austin Peters, and Biodun Stevens use film to tell true Nigerian stories. Mm -hmm. That means your 51st would be higher. Well, naturally. A recent production that will resonate with any Nigerian is Juju Stories, a three-part anthology film which tackles Juju, which is black magic, in contemporary Lagos. Turning to yams after picking cash from sidewalks. Juju Stories is a Nigerian film. Um, it's an anthology series of three short films in one that explore, you know, Nigerian urban myths and folklore. Um, it's really interesting to see all these urban myths that we've heard growing up or, you know, even in our adulthood that, you know, they popularize our conversations and daily life. It was really interesting to see it dramatized in film in this manner. I thought it was a very creative film, very well done. The use of black magic love potion to find an ideal mate, the consequences of picking money from the roadside, and a situation where love and friendship becomes an obsession. The second story is called Yam, and um, I thought this one was very funny because it's one of the, probably the first urban myths I would say that you are introduced to as a young child growing up in Nigeria, which is the one where your parents tell you, if you're outside and you see money on the ground, don't pick it up because you might disappear, you might turn into a chicken, you might turn into a goat. In this instance, the person that picks up the money turns into a piece of yam. And, you know, a lot of things that are really comical happen afterwards. Um, so I, that was a very, you know, comedic addition to the series of films. People turn into yams after picking cash from sidewalks. Fucking shut up your mouth and chop this yam! I think the one story in the film that resonated with me the most was Yam because back then when I was a kid, even 100 Naira was still big money. So, but to, as a kid, you just had that fear of your mother's voice in your head that even if you see 500 Naira on the ground, you say to fear, you walk around it, you wouldn't even dare to pick it up. So, because you heard all the stories, oh, you immediately you disappear, you reappear in somebody's house or somebody's wardrobe. You'll be vomiting money. So just things like that. Like that's even as an adult, if I see money on the ground, I won't pick it up because my mother's head will forever be in the back of my head, <laughs> reminding me that I could disappear or turn into something. Growing up as a child in a typical Nigerian home, parents engaged our minds with these stories and they lived with us through time. But have we outlived them, especially now as adults? Think about it. All right, you do stories, um, the series. Well, just taking a look at some of the stuff, what we talked about earlier, uh, where they say if you pick money from the floor um, on the road, you just turn to a yam. Yes, I know, I heard that one very mm, well. Or you turn to a goat and you follow uh, the person. That one, who... uh, do I call it superstition or just normal? When that bomb or bomb of a thing was yeah, raining, this raining. ritual of a thing. So that's when they throw money in order to catch children. So I won't say superstition, but they are just using that one. Children don't pick money, just like when you tell children don't talk to strangers. So they are using that one just to like caution us. Mm. It's like caution. Don't do this, don't do that. So that one is yeah, caution. Just, and uh, yeah, that's uh, well. Those are the credo superstition. Well, it actually happens. Yeah, I don't know if it happens. I have not seen anyone that turned to no, you. No, just okay. Yes. Eh. All right, so let's take a few messages. Um, I'm Yazid from Kebi State. When you are sweeping, sweep a lady. If you only are sweeping and sweep a lady's leg, the lady will never get married. Mm, I mm. don't know. I am Mr. Noble from Potakot. Those days we were told that if a fowl crows at night, that means it has, it's, that means it has defiled the land and the fowl must be killed. 
that night and they must yeah. eat it that same night. <laughs> I love this oh, gosh. oh my god. You are not serious. Please the head. Keep the head. Okay, from Benue from Benue among the chief people of Nigeria is that if you come into a compound where they have just finished eating, it means you won't get married in the near future. Hmm. And that pregnant women should not go about at night for aliens only go about at night and if it comes across it she would give birth to okay call this coming in and distracting it all right there's another one vulture that's imagine imagine your your maybe wedding burial whatever kind of party you know there are some states that you go to vulture still exist there mm. so some of those village once you go there and they, they cook where did they cook if vulture no come they say the party no go go well are you serious? Meanwhile, the vulture are hungry, carry and come. Down. <laughs> okay. Um, Iwalade from Ondo State says, Then if I sit on the motor, my mom, my granny would say it is not good, but the boil will grow out from my butt. Okay. Uh, let's take one more and then we'll, uh, we'll go to Lagos very soon now. The first person you meet on your way home, male or female, determines the success or failure of your outing. Felix again from Makodi. Um, I don't know if we we'll have it. If we we'll have some time to take something from the diaspora from abroad, you know, I know there are, this whole superstitious thing and taboo is not just here. It happens all over the world. Mm. Uh, there is. Uh, there, I know that there is this one. They say number thirteen. There are some plane you enter. There are no number thirteen. They say thirteen is evil, is bad luck, and stuff like that. But um, recent planes now there are. But I know they they don't. They used to be none. All right, let's uh, quickly take this feature, if we can, before we go to Lagos to see, to get our final thoughts from Lego. Irrational as they may be, we all have a superstition, not just here in Nigeria, but all over the world, because they give meaning to the often random nature of luck and put us in the driving seat of our destiny. Here are five surprising superstitions with their cultural beliefs. A numbers game. Different cultures revere or fear different numbers like 666. Celebrities always die in groups of three. You better be careful, Trey. You're right. For Chinese, the number four is a no-no due to similarities in its pronunciation to the word for death. Friday the 13th is unlucky because 12 is thought to be divine and complete number under the umbrella. Don't open the umbrella, not inside. Very lucky. Opening an umbrella inside is like asking for bad luck to rain down on you. Why? Umbrella were once commonly used to protect against sun. So opening one indoor is considered an insult to the sun gods and they will be so mad. Singing in the rain. Are you on a crack? Step on a crack or you fall and break your back. <laughs> Don't step on a crack or you will fall and break. <coughs> this mass superstition was born out of racism rather than concern for mothers. The rhyme was one step on a crack turns one's mother black. However, that evolved into step on a crack breaks one's mother's back. It's nonsense. You know, step on a crack, break your mother's back. It doesn't work. I know. All right, there are some of these um, practices we see, well, even outside the country. But, uh, but let's just focus on back home. I still have um, Lake on in Lagos. And uh, Lake on, I'll be coming to you now for your closing thought. Uh, tell us um, what else you'd like to share with us from, um, from your end. Just do that in two minutes if you can. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to appreciate everybody because I've had their contributions and to shows we are really Africans because this is part of us and we know what we should know as Africans. Then you need to know one thing about this superstition or taboo. Our forefathers, they're not fool. They know what they are doing. And as I've told you earlier on, this thing we call taboo is a way to guide the society so that we won't be lawless. 
is a way to guide the society because we don't have police that time that can police everywhere. So your conscience will tell you if I do this, it's a taboo, and this is the river caution. So that's why if nobody's even there, you will not like to do it. You avoid since doing such a thing. Taking for instance, they will tell you you don't beat a male child with broom because they know a male child is always troublesome, always like to look for trouble always like to annoy you and the what is nearer to you then is broom you just start with, and you can that broom can enter his eyes and that would be a very big problem to the child and to the mother so they said no it's a taboo don't beat a male child with broom you can see that is a way to really perfect the society not really that negative things will happen as we used to see but to make sure Things are well done or are done correctly in our society. But these days, we are still Africans. Let's say because I'm a born again Christian, I'm a Muslim. No, you still need to believe on these things and Africans so that we can still keep our trust and Africans and let our children know that this is not good, is a way to guide the society. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Lekon Adjurotutu. He's a traditionalist, for those of you who don't know. Of course, that's why he's speaking so much about that. He's a traditionalist from Lagos. Thank you very much for doing this with us. I really appreciate it. I really hope that maybe we could, have, we could get someone to speak to us from other regions of the country so that we can get a clearer picture. Um, but um, I would be saying my bye-bye now. I see all your messages. I appreciate it. But let me take this one from Stanley in Abuja. It's a long one. He says... Anyone that doesn't believe in them is superstitious. I'm a traditional man and I respect people's tradition anywhere I go. When I was in camp in the East, we were asked not to kill a python because it's sacred to them. My six years in Russia, in Russia, if you can't, you can't be in front of your door, either out or inside, to uh, exchange handshakes. In Russia, you don't drink gin and hold on to the cup. You must finish the quantity you took or let it bring bad luck. In Russia, if you don't shake, if you don't shake, if you don't shake with someone on the stairways, okay, you don't shake with someone on the stairways because it is forbidden. In Russia, if you want to pass your exam, wake up at 12 midnight and shout, good luck to me, three times, or you will never fail, and you will never fail your you exams. Fail. Europeans, <laughs> Americans, and including the natives in this have their own beliefs too. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate your many contributions on the program. <laughs> For those of you on WhatsApp who tried to send in your messages and couldn't make it, I'm sorry. We'll do that. Uh, we'll try to rectify it for next week. Amulika, <laughs> your final words. My final word is whether you're a Christian, whether you're anything, anywhere you go to any state, you go to respect their culture. That's the only thing I would tell All you. All right, respect their culture and, uh, yes, and just keep it. And uh, we'll all be better people and a better United country. My name is Cecil. Thank you very much for doing this with us. Let's do this next week. Thank you.